In the last section, we saw that COM estimation can be biased toward zero. This motivated us to move to GCOM estimation, which we saw that can be a bit inefficient with data. In this part of the lecture, we'll see some methods where we try to increase the data efficiency. The first is TARnet. So here's what the model for a COM estimator would look like. We're going to use neural networks again here. And this network takes both T and W as input. We saw that the problem with this was bias. It could be biased towards zero, which led us to GCOM estimation. Here we depict two neural networks, one for the treatment group data, one for the control group data. And both of these only take W as input. The problem with this is that we saw it could have too much variance because both of these networks are trained with less data. This motivates a sort of hybrid ar architecture that we have in Tarnet, where we use all of the data to train this network. So we only give W as input, and then the network branches off into two heads, one for the treatment group and one for the control group. The hope is that this will kind of take the best of both worlds here in the COM estimation and GCOM estimation. And technically, we can use this network architecture in a COM estimator. So this single network would be the mu hat in the COM estimator, where the input for T is used to know which head to branch off into after getting to the treatment agnostic representation in the middle here. However, what I said on the last slide was not completely true. So it is true that the subnetwork that maps from W to this treatment agnostic representation uses all of the data. It's not true that this whole network uses all of the data. So the head that branches off for the treatment group only uses the treatment group data. The subnetwork for that head is only trained using treatment group data. Similarly, the subnetwork for the t equals zero head is only trained using the control group data. We'll now move on to another method that tries to increase data efficiency, the X learner. I don't really keep up with the X-Men movies, but I think there might be an X learner X-Men movie coming out pretty soon. It's this X-Men that's just always reading books and it's just really, their superpower is basically just reading books. Anyway, so there's three steps to the X learner. The first step is to estimate mu1 hat and mu0 hat, where each of these models only take X as input. And for simplicity, we'll be considering the case that they consider in their paper, which is that X is a sufficient adjustment set and is all observed covariance. Okay, so we just pick any model from scikit-learn, say, and then fit it for mu1 hat and do the same for mu0 hat. It can be a different model if you like. Then in step two, so we're gonna use the same numbering for the steps here that they use in the paper, but step two is kind of like two parts. So in step 2a, we impute the individual treatment effects. So for the treatment group data, we compute the ITEs for the treatment group using the observed outcome, which is y1, for each of the individuals i. And then we use the model that we fit for mu0, where we feed in that individual's covariates to impute this treatment effect. So we're, we're kind of imputing this potential outcome, the one that we don't observe due to the fundamental problem of causal inference. And then we do the analog in the control group. So here, for the control group ITEs, we observe the Y0 potential outcome as the observed outcome Y, and then we impute the potential outcome Y1 using the mu1 model that we fit in step one to impute this ITE for the control group as well. Okay, so for a, a given ITE, for, say, let's consider the treatment group IDEs. For a given treatment group ITE, we use the data from one outcome in the treatment group here, and we use all of the control group data. And the way we're able to use all of the data, not just one outcome in the treatment group, 
is doing what we do in step 2b. We fit a model tau1 hat of x to predict tau1i right here, this ITE that we just got in the last step, from xi. Okay, so we feed in all of these tau1i hats, and then we try to predict them from the corresponding covariates, xi. So this model tau1 hat is going to use all of the data. So it already used all of the control group data here, and then now that we're using all of these imputed ITEs, where we use all of the treatment group outcomes, we're going to end up using all of the data in total. And tau1 hat will give us estimates for all of the different data points. X can be any X here, whereas in step 2a, we only got estimates for the treatment group data with tau1 i hat. Then we do the exact same thing with the tau zero i hat data that we had here. And that gives us another way to estimate the conditional average treatment effects, tau zero hat of x. So we now have two different estimators of the conditional average treatment effect, tau one hat and tau zero hat. In step three, we combine these using a weighting function, g of x here, that can be anything that outputs numbers between 0 and 1. In the XLearner paper, they say that they find that using the propensity score works fairly well, which we'll see shortly. But you don't need to be using the propensity score. That concludes the second section of this lecture, and I'll leave you with this question. What would motivate someone to consider a more complex type of estimation like the two that we just saw, than COM or GCOM estimation.